Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. I'm Chef Christine Cushing, and I'm teaching horrible cooks how to be fearless in the kitchen. Today, I work with Melissa, a flight attendant who's frightful in the kitchen. She goes from making a mess of quiche... Oh, that's so <laughs> gross. ...to serving crepe Suzette at a high-end French restaurant. Are you nuts? I can't do that. She looks so scared. Will this flight attendant soar to new culinary heights? Uh, it's gonna go right through! Or will she end up poisoning her husband yet again? This is like probably the big test today, right? So we'll see what happens. Melissa's a successful flight attendant, but put her in the kitchen, and it's a total no-fly zone. Melissa is a terrible cook. I have no idea. <laughs> Cooking is not my forte. She's really not a good cook. I don't really want to taste any of her food. One of her specialties once sent her husband to a specialist. She plays me once with chicken. I had no idea that you couldn't defrost, refreeze, defrost, refreeze chicken. Traumatized by that experience, Melissa now relies on her mom to feed her family. I do the cooking mostly of the time, maybe around five, six times a week. Melissa does need to learn how to cook herself. Oh, if she could cook something really good at the end of this, it'll be, it'll be great. My job is to teach Melissa how to make delicious home-cooked meals for her family so she doesn't have to depend on her mother. If I'm successful, I'll take her from mom's takeout to Melissa's homemade. So, Christine, welcome to my kitchen. This is the kitchen. This is it. Describe the dinner routine in this household. What happens? 4.30 at my parents' house. <laughs> so Not much here. What would happen if your mom actually moved away, if she wasn't close I by? I would go with her. <laughs> Are you serious? No, I'm serious. And is there something in particular that you've always wanted to learn to make? A veal scallopini, or I love apple pie from scratch. I want to know why you want to learn to cook now. My family consists of my husband, my two and a half year old, and this baby on the way. Yes. And I need to just put something together. <laughs> right. And then to sit down and enjoy our dinner together. Okay, I really need to see you take some baby steps because we're really starting from scratch. Yes. The first of those baby steps is to get you to cook by yourself and for me to watch you. I know that you can make scrambled eggs. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna make me a quiche. Yeah. I got you just some regular ingredients from the grocery store. This is what you have to choose from. You don't have to use it all. And I already pre-made the dough, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm so nervous to cook for Christina. I can't believe that this is actually happening. So what is this? This is milk? And what's this? How many eggs am I using? Melissa's instincts are really non-existent in the kitchen. Oh yeah, both you and I have to taste this. Oh, so no, let's you're on your own. <laughs> no, I am not on my own, girl. Oh. This food poisoning you're sharing with me. Let's cut some of this. It's either ham or turkey. That's enough cheese. <laughs> that little fork is just scraping all those lovely little bits from the non-stick pan. No, no. Oh. oh. <laughs> Melissa scrambled her eggs and then put it into a raw pastry shell and then put it into the oven. Gross! Ah, hot. Some little salsa on it. Yeah, salsa. That's gonna save this quiche. Okay. All I can smell right now is raw dough and salsa. <laughs> Check this out. Uh oh. Get yourself a fork, too, because Oh, no, we're... no. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm with child. Yeah. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> get ready for it. You're going to have a nice little surprise. Oh, no. Close your eyes, plug your nose. You don't taste a thing. <laughs> That's not the point. <laughs> oh, so gross. Mm. It's all yours, baby. <laughs> How does it taste? It's just put a little bit more salsa. That quiche was a crash and burn. 
But now it's about building Melissa's confidence, teaching her some basic techniques and showing her how to make some great food from scratch so she can make the transition from mom's delivery to Melissa's homemade. Okay, Melissa, now I'm gonna show you how to make an amazing quiche okay. that your family is going to love. This one is gonna be brie, leek, and spinach. I wanted to show you the process of rolling dough right. because I know you said you loved apple pie. I love this shape because it's a French rolling pin and it doesn't have any ball bearings, oh, so it's a really okay. good technique to use. The key is keeping the pastry moving and it's not gonna stick. Okay, so now you see how you're, you're turning it into a rectangle yeah. all of a sudden? So instead of putting equal pressure around, I'm just putting pressure on one side and this side doesn't get any bigger, you see? Now this takes some practice, obviously. Right. You're gonna do the next one for me, Jake. Oh. <laughs> Look at you with your it's French coming. pin. I'm so it's excited. Coming. Push the pastry okay, in. Good. You wanna have a little bit of excess in there so that it doesn't shrink down and then you lose your filling. Blind baking the crust, sometimes called pre-baking, is something I do always when making a quiche. Take a little parchment paper, either beans or pie weights, and then pop it in the oven at 375 for about 15 minutes. It'll give you a great crispy crust every time. Now we get to make the filling. Have you ever used fresh leeks? No. Leek? Melissa. Melissa, leek. The huge through the roof no-no. Remember when you were using the non-stick pan and you were scraping it with a metal fork? Yeah. Always use either rubber or wooden utensils because you're actually scraping up the bottom of that and it's going into the food, so that's a no-no. This is how we get flavor. Medium high heat, a little bit of melting butter. Leeks are gonna go in. Mm. A couple of handfuls of the baby spinach. Okay. I love to add some fresh grated nutmeg. Oh, look at that. Smell that. Oh, wow. If you go to the pre-ground stuff. It doesn't smell like that. Set it off to the side. So now, a very common misconception about quiche. You're not actually cooking the eggs prior because they're gonna cook in your pastry when you put them in the oven the second time. Here I'm using a 10% cream. So you just wanna make sure that all that egg white and yolk is dissolved. Do you smell is your nose telling you? And what you're looking for there is you see the golden edges? Yeah. That tells you they're done. We're just gonna let those cool slightly. Just take a little bit of that. And now you can just crumble in some of that brie. Perfect. Look at just fill that and it's gonna go back in the oven. Now Sounds we've good. turned it down to 325. And then until 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Moment of tart. Ta-da! Ta-da! Now Melissa, unlike your leaky quiche, this is a tart that anybody in your family would fall over if you served it to them. Do I need to close my eyes, plug my nose? No! <laughs> oh my gosh. It's really nice. And now do you taste all the different elements? Hmm. I think it's so good. Mm -hmm. It's a definite party in your mouth. All these flavors. So I'm gonna keep pushing the envelope on that pastry side, but I think we're gonna sweeten things up a bit. What's your favorite dessert? Apple pie. Bingo. Coming up, Melissa comes in for a landing at a pie factory. Now, have you made pies before? I've never made anything before. <laughs> And later, she's in for a bumpy ride when she attempts to make crepes table-side. Looks like bunny huh? Melissa's a flight attendant who's had trouble getting her cooking off the ground. She's very honest and upfront about it, and she just, she doesn't cook. Usually, her cooking ends in ordering from mom's takeout. She likes to eat, but she doesn't like to cook. But I'm showing her that good home cooking doesn't have to be a bad trip. And what better way to get Melissa's culinary spirits to soar than by showing her how to make her favorite dessert, apple pie. Wanda's pie in the sky. She is the lady that is gonna make you the best pie ever. She's not only gonna make it, but you are gonna make it with her. So we're not going in the front entrance. We're going in where the cooks go in. <laughs> Wanda, this is Melissa. Hi, Melissa, nice Wanda, nice to meet you. this is your new assistant baker. Now, have you made pies before? I've never made anything before. Okay. Huh? Experience is what you need. Bring it on. <laughs> so we're going to start off by making our own dough from scratch. What you're looking for is that the flour <laughs> disappears and you don't really see white. Once it clumps nicely, dump it on the counter and ball it up. And then we'll be letting it rest in the fridge. So next, we go over to the big machine called the sheeter. This machine will take our rested dough and roll it out flat for us, so we don't actually need the rolling pins this time. But if Melissa's not careful, the dough can stretch too much and tear. Aww. I can't! I'm, a, I'm afraid it's gonna go right through! Yay! Very good! Now that our pastry is rolled, we're gonna cut it to size. 
The hardest part is getting it into the pie plate, laying it right into the middle like that oh, okay. and opening it up. Press it in delicately. You don't want to break the pastry. There we go. Beautiful. So now the filling. First we peel the apples, then we mix in a little bit of cinnamon, some sugar, and lemon. And then nutmeg. So remember, this was your quiche. That's right. That's the rasp, okay? Finally, the filling goes in, then we put on the tops, and then they go into Wanda's enormous oven for about an hour. <laughs> we got smell vision Wanda, thank you so much. My pleasure. I think today, learning how to make apple pies has really helped me. I would definitely serve this pie to my family. They would absolutely love it. I do think I'm prepared for the next level. We'll see what Christine has to bring. Now the next step on our journey from mom's takeout to Melissa's homemade, I'm showing Melissa another dish that her family is gonna love. Melissa, now it's time to do a little cooking together. This is kind of the next step where I get you a little more confident. We're gonna make chicken scallopini piccata and a really quick northern bean saute. Sounds good. And no poisoning. No. So with any meat, never thaw and rethaw. So if it's frozen, keep it frozen until you're ready to use it. Okay. And if you thaw it and you're not gonna use it, just cook it and put it in the fridge for later. Otherwise, you have to throw it out. Okay. So we're gonna start with two chicken breasts. We're going to pound them with a mallet until they're about a quarter to a half an inch thick. This is gonna make the chicken cook more evenly throughout. So a little bit of flour, it's gonna give us a bit of texture. Always put it in away from you like that. So do the second one for me. So this first step is not gonna cook it fully. It's gonna give us some color. It's gonna brown the chicken a bit and it's gonna introduce a little bit of that flavor into the sauce. So we went from the nutmeg grater and we went made the pie, the big rasp. So this is another version of the rasp. And Help not yourself. to the white part, just like. No. You are paying attention and you're, I am. I you're remembering am. everything. I am absorbing all of this. Now we'll take the chicken off the heat. Then we make the sauce, which is garlic, your lemon zest, and the chili flakes. Then we put the chicken back in, and it's gonna finish cooking in this great little sauce. Give it a little swirl. Okay. Oh, 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 it's talking. So what's that saying to you right it's now? It's too <laughs> Okay, set this to the side, and I really wanna show you this fantastic bean salad that I think you're gonna love. Saute onions, black sun-dried olives, some northern Italian beans. Let's go with some basil, a little bit of parsley. Now toss it. I'm not tossing. <laughs> if you can deal with passengers in the sky, you can toss a pan. You can toss a pan, just melt <laughs> anything in it. <laughs> Ready? I'm afraid. Give it a little swirl look, around. Look at that, it's coming! <laughs> oh, look at you. Mama. I'm so excited. You know what we didn't do? You didn't tell me if the chicken is ready or how do we know? Oh, I just assumed you would tell me. <laughs> coming up, will Melissa's foray into table service at a high-end bistro be a turbulent trip? Woo! And later, will she crash and burn when she cooks for her family and friends? <gasps> Take them out, take them out, it's fine. Melissa's a flight attendant who's just awful in the kitchen. Melissa is a terrible cook. But I'm trying to help her reach new culinary heights. I showed her how to make a mouth-watering quiche, gave her a chance to create her favorite dessert, and now I'm teaching her another homemade meal that her family is gonna love, chicken scallopini piccata. So how do we know that the chicken is done? Press into it? Yeah, so you right. see the firmness of that? Yes. Absolutely fully done. cooked. So look at that on its own. It looks it's okay, but now I'm gonna say, come in, dinner's ready. Look how soft. Look at how nice and tender and moist it is. You know what, I have a feeling. Have a feeling. You're gonna flip your lid. You can taste the chicken, but the yeah. herbs and everything give it a flavor. Yeah. So it's and not it's just chicken. Perhaps right now you should take your tray table, stow it, bring your seat upright, because we're going in for a landing, and it might be a bit hard. I've given Melissa some great basic skills in the kitchen. Now it's time to turn up the heat. We're off to DDA, an upscale French restaurant, where Melissa will be making a classic dessert for paying customers. If she can pull this off, Mom's takeout is gonna be a thing of the past. Come this way. Okay, so this is a beautiful, super high-end French restaurant. In a very short while, this will be filled with patrons for whom you will be serving Crepe Suzette. 
What is the creep, Suzette? <laughs> well, we're gonna go find out. Salut, Didier. How are you doing? Very good, how are you? Let me present to you, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. This is Didier, the chef, his place. This space is yours. We will work. If you need anything, we'll be happy to be with you. Okay, okay, okay. thanks. Merci. So crepe Suzette is a classic French dish. It's crepes that then get mixed in with a butter, sugar, orange flavor, uh, a little bit of orange liqueur, and they get flambéed. That's dangerous. <laughs> it's a bit dangerous, yes. This is a little uh, paper towel that's just soaked in some oil. This is for keeping the pan well oiled, but not adding too much to it. Go to simmer, just about two thirds full. Add the batter and swirl it. Just kind of loosen it up, flip it over. So that is the crepe. I feel pressure. So you gotta flip it. <laughs> okay, so it's a little burnt. <laughs> a little burnt. So Melissa's starting on the crepes and they're not looking so good. She's not getting the hang. It's a rhythm, it's a dance. It looks like burning. Huh? What Melissa doesn't know about the crepes, Suzette, is she's gonna have to go table side and serve them, actually flambe them in front of guests. Okay, give me another one. Oh, Suzette. Chef, what's our time? How many do we need to make? We need uh, 25 crepes <laughs> in 25 minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna have to step in, give her a hand, cook a few of these crepes. They're looking better though. Okay, Melissa, we got them done. Next step, filling. The Suzette part is essentially an orange filling. A little bit of butter and then a little bit of sugar. Add a little bit of the zest. OJ, swirl that around a bit. Put the crepe in, just hold it in half and then fold it into a little triangle. Now for the flambe part. Just taking some of the Grand Marnier like that. Woo! Yay. Flambe. Things are going along pretty well, but what Melissa doesn't know right now is she has to make these and have Didier taste them. Show me. Didier comes over and I thought I'd be fine, but he's a chef and it's his restaurant, so I'm sure he has his own particulars about certain things, so I'm a little afraid that I may not meet his standards. So it was a little nerve-wracking. Go easy on me. No way. Love it. <laughs> so, Chef, do you think uh, Melissa's ready? I think it's time for you to show your talent. You have a beautiful cart here, and I have some customers waiting for you in the dining room, and you have to make the crème flambé for them. The chef has tasted Melissa's crepes, and guess what? He likes them. So now it's time to send her out to serve table side. I have some customers waiting for you in the dining room, and you have to make the crème flambé for them. Right in here, this is Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Uh, hi. Tell them what you're going to make for them. Crepe set. <laughs> Think about that, I forgot. Do you want shots first? Good patience. Give it a fair bit. It's okay. It's okay. She looks so scared. Oh my god. Woo! Yay. Nice sweetness to it. It's really nice. It's fabulous. I don't think I thought that I would ever be serving table side at a high-end restaurant. Hearing some positive feedback was really nice to hear. It gave me a little bit more self-confidence. Melissa totally exceeded my expectations table side. She really made a great crepe. Now though, it's time to go back to her place, cook solo for her family. That's always tough. Melissa, it's cooking time and this is your solo performance. I'm excited for you. What you're gonna be making is field scallopini marsala. You have one hour. All the techniques that you're gonna use, you've learned before. Mm -hmm. All right, how you feel, good? Scared. Scared. <laughs> I'm a little nervous to be cooking for my family and friends, just because one is my mother and the rest all have comments. <laughs> are you hanging laundry or are you dredging veal? <gasps> what? What? Take them out, take them out, take them out. Oh, good gosh. 
Melissa put the veal right into the liquid sauce instead of pan frying it first, which could have been a big disaster. It was going to get tough and chewy. We've taken it out, and it's all good. Hi, Anna. Are you ready for this? It's showtime. Butterflies in the stomach or no? Yeah, that and the baby. <laughs> but uh, a little nervous. You scared? Uh, a little bit. I'm scared and nervous at the same time. <laughs> she poisoned me once with chicken. Let's hope that she learned how to cook. Uh, let's hope so. You've been doing it for long enough. Yeah. She has her own family now. Yeah. You know, yeah. another yeah. one on the way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Serving time. They're just perfect, Melissa. Okay. Yeah. Right. You passed the test. Melissa's journey has been extra special because remember, she was always depending on her mom's food. Now, she can take charge of her own kitchen. She's got lots of great recipes she can try, and she won't be calling mom for takeout anymore. <laughs> One last surprise. Wow. This is the pie that Melissa made at Wanda's Pie in the Sky. I don't think I can compare where I was before to where I am now. I think this whole experience has made me absolutely fearless of that kitchen and um, makes me want to take on more challenges with cooking. Visit myviva.ca slash fearless in the kitchen 